Hello everybody, we are back on Gelvin Valley, Farming Simulator 15, and this wonderful map made by Wild Wild Wes. It's been a little bit since I've been in here, but I know I was doing bailing when I last uh, let off. We've been contracted with, or rather the uh, city uh, officials say that it's okay for anyone to bale the hay off up here, and if they mow it off, they're welcome to all the hay they can take. They're not allowed to farm crops up here, but we are allowed to take the bales off. So let's just tab over to our equipment. Here we go, and we will continue in this fine map. I'm just noticing our bale counters kind of in a obtuse location, but oh well. Hopefully we can get the Feeling done. I gotta remember the different controls in here. I'm so used to all oh, too fast. I've been doing a fair amount of playing the game in Farm Sim 11, a previous version, and the controls change a little bit between the games, so. Trying to get reacquainted with how things work on Farm Sim 15. Popping cap just a moment. Still enamored with the, the views on this map, and we are on one whale of a hill trying to get it all bailed up. We pulled our round baler kind of out of the mothballs, if you will. I don't think we use it that much anymore. I typically have been renting a square baler. They tend to work a little easier as we work with the bales, but we still own the round baler. I'm almost wondering if I should be selling it, so whoop, almost got one coming here. So I can maybe take care of this little deficit problem that I have. And fortunately all the bales come out with Velcro, which is handy, so they stick to the hill. Well, hopefully everybody is having a wonderful New Year's. I record this here. I think we're on the 8th of the New Year, or just before the 9th. Oh, this is just zipping down the hill. Oh, my goodness. I would never have the intestinal fortitude to do this in real life on a hill like this. You know, sometimes top down we get, yeah, just look at that. This is just treacherous. Maybe anybody, somebody watching this would do it. But anyway, hopefully everybody's having a wonderful new year. We, uh, I've uh, enjoyed the past week we just had in our local family here. We, oh, things change, I've observed, when you have a family and get older and the kids start leaving the home, becoming more independent and all those things that you raise children for. Well, part of it anyhow. They eventually move out, start doing things on their own, and you just don't see them very much anymore. And so it makes the times like Christmas and New Year and the holidays all the more precious, you know, when they can come home and you can be with one another again. And, you know, it seems like those opportunities anymore are few and far between at this stage of my life. Uh, we have two young men at home, two boys, and our daughters are out in a way on their own. One of them lives locally and the other lives in Kansas and she was uh, visiting us this past week, came home for a spell. So enjoyed having my own family Christmas, if you will, know, with just uh, a wife and kids. And really what necessitated or brought about her trip home was something else. I think I've mentioned it before here in this uh, video. Uh, there was, a, at the church that we, we go to, there was a special uh, auction held for a hospital that we support down in Haiti. And my wife and I tried something new this year. You know, we've, oh my 
light, this is just going too fast. We, uh, we noticed in the past there were some couples at our church who had a meal and they sold it to the highest bidder. So obviously all the proceeds went to the hospital and, and whoever sold the meal had to pony up and put it on for the people who had the bid. So we decided uh, we would try that, at, you know, with some Chinese food. You know, I don't know how long we've been cooking. I think we were trying to figure this out here the other night. I think back in 2018, give or take a year or two, my favorite uh, Chinese chef in town, he died. And his family kept the restaurant going for a little while, but they just weren't as good. Their heart wasn't in it. So I think probably what happened is that they just sold the real estate to the restaurant and they all ran. <laughs> That's my theory anyhow. But after he passed, um, you know, we got other Chinese food restaurants here. I mean, and there are some that are okay, but they're just not the same. And I just remember thinking at the time, it's like, well, what am I gonna do to get my Chinese food fix? Um, so the thought that came was, well, maybe we can do this at home. And so kind of over the ensuing time, I've learned a little about how to cook Chinese cuisine. And it is really involved. You know, I, all I did was I just started Googling the term Chinese food recipes and seeing what was out there and printing off recipes. And, and we went through a period of time, you know, and then COVID happened a year or two later. So there was lots of time at home and we manufactured tons of uh, Chinese food as a family. I mean, to the point where the boys at home kind of were getting sick of it. You know, we would just have it pretty much every, well, oh, come on, Grandpa, you can get up the hill. <laughs> almost, er, almost full. It's so miserable steep in here. So over a, a few years, we practiced this over and over, and we've had even company in. We were brave enough finally at some point to invite folks to our home and try to share a, a meal with them. And generally, it's had a... Come on. Boy, this is just not budging. I... Machine no go. Oh, is this where I have to hold on? I mean, I'm in four wheel drive. I should be going. Oh. Come on. Maybe I need to do kind of like I did earlier in the map. I got to turn the bather on and off in order to kind of skip up this hill. I don't know if that helps or not. Suffice it to say, we, uh, after doing this for a while, we decided we'd stick our necks out and try to share this um, with, uh, you know, someone that bid on it in the auction, you know, in the hope that some money would go to uh, charity. So we did the ad, and like, I, I think I related to all this on a previous episode, and we finally nailed down, we met the people who bid on, uh, on the meal, and we set up a date that there were six couples, 12 people. And here this past weekend, we finally had them in for, uh, for the meal. So I think we basically had a year to do it. And so, you know, as anybody that's ever tried to schedule anything with other people, it's always, you know, hectic trying to line up schedules. And not only for them, but also for our family. And it isn't too hard to schedule something with my wife and I and the boys, but um, girls also wanted to be involved. And so uh, that kind of coordinated with uh, when my daughter, you know, would come home for Christmas, if you will. So it all kind of worked together. And as I'm doing this episode, it's basically a day after we had... Uh, we put this occasion on for her, for the people. And I frankly still feel sore. You know, it's not that often, um, I, I guess I'm just a sedentary person as a general rule. You know, mainly have an office job. And so I'm sitting on my can most of the time. And, and so to have a, you know, a time period, very concentrated effort of being on your feet, 
substantial hours of the day and hours and hours in a row at a time um, kind of left and the tension of getting everything ready making everything work I think it just takes a toll on a person and maybe someone would hear that ad and say well you're just getting old and it would be right um, let's see if I can get, oh my goodness this is steep I'll turn it off and see if I can climb just a little better before turning it back on there we go oh come on there we go Come on, Clyde. Kids, don't try this at home. So we uh, we've had company in with this before, and you know, typically if we have a company in, we do about what we can handle. We try to strategize a meal where we have a mixture of everything. When I say mixture, anybody that's had Chinese food knows, you know, sometimes they have a sweet dish, sometimes there's hot, you know, anytime you see here something like Kung Pao, this, that, or other, it generally means it's hot or it has a little spice in it, a little fire, um, you know, versus sweet and sour, you know, you hear that term commonly, or maybe it's uh, somewhere in between or a more of a salty type dish if you will you know maybe something like a chow mein you know or soy based and so we try to pick a mix but also in the mix is uh, allocating kitchen resources shall we say um, you know one of the things we've noticed over time is you know we we just don't have as much space as we like to have although we have have plenty but uh, stove space is at a premium so sometimes the dishes you pick you know you can't have too many dishes using the same resource or else you run into trouble and you're not able to get it all all the meal to kind of come together at the same time so so we had to figure that out with this one too and, and given that the people donated you know what they did you know of course nothing comes to my pocket but given that they spent so much you know it obviously sacrificed a lot to have it you know we wanted to make sure they had a special experience and so yeah this past week we began shopping and in on the town we got a few Asian stores uh, come on you can get back up there I turned it off a little quicker and so we went into several of those by and large most of the ingredients and the things we need to do this kind of cooking you can get at a general grocery store but there's always going to be a few specialty things that you kind of have to go to uh, a specialty store, Asian food uh, supply store, if you will. And and generally, I've noticed the people that run these stores, uh, at least in our area, they are they are at least dual language citizens and only English barely. You know, it's like that he traveled to America, and this was uh, this was something they could do, and so they uh, that that's kind of I, I don't know. I, I've just noticed that the people in there that they work with they they hardly understand English. So sometimes it's a challenge. You go into those st stores, you know, to try to ask, well, where can I find the Sichuan peppercorns, and get, you know, trying to speak the same terms or whatever to find it. It's, it's kind of fun to go in there and, and do that and get all the pieces together. Uh, in the past, you know, we've had company, we've just focused on the food, and this time here we wanted to also focus on the decoration, so we kind of made some alterations to our dining room at home and set the table up. You know, we wanted, wanted it to kind of have the feel for people that if they came in that they were kind of stepping inside a Chinese food restaurant. We have a friend of the family, if you will, who works for a company that you know loans out decorating type equipment, if you will. I think primarily people who use the place for all oh, for weddings and graduation parties and those kinds of things. And you know, I, I asked uh, the lady that was helping us, you know, if you ever had someone ask for you know a Chinese dinner or those kinds of decorating and she had never worked on one before so I think <laughs> I think it was hopefully it was good experience for her also but we got all these things hung up in our dining room and candles put out and specialized dishes and kind of matched you know what you would expect to see in a Chinese food restaurant and so there was a ton of time just put into the ad 
um, kind of Friday, Saturday, as I recall. And then there was just the general prep. You know, we started in the kitchen and trying to set all these things up. Um, you know, there was some things like, what can we do in advance that will make the day of feel a little bit easier? And one of those things, I don't think in Saturday night, what all that we do, um, you know, the concept of fortune cookies. I have heard that fortune cookies actually aren't a traditional Chinese thing at all. It's kind of an American invention. Uh, who knows where it came from? Um, but but I figured that's that's something that you, you know most just like I was describing with the stores. Most of the time you go into Chinese food restaurant, it is run by ethnic uh, Chinese people. You know it's extremely rare you would see someone in there of a different ethnicity either serving or cooking the food or whatever that's just kind of how these are but i've also noticed that these stores i mean they cater to the customers of course and so whether it's begrudging or not i don't know but if you go in there you will find fortune cookies for example as as a typical dessert come on get up there just one last little tip in here what it is about turning it on and off it helps them loaf up the hill but it does and folks we have bailed the last straw there we go we'll turn the baler off raise it up I'm gonna come over here and set up follow me to get back to our farm unable to all oh, good be Okay, so maybe I need to get a little bit closer. I gotta get in the armpit of this other vehicle. I'll come now. Maybe this one needs to go first because it's got a shorter little thing here. Alright, let me go back here and we'll get him to follow. Oh, yes, start the engine. Of course, of course. There we go. Follow me is on. Back to the farm we go. So, uh, Saturday night made me some fortune cookies. This was like the fourth time I tried the recipe. And maybe some of you all, or people listening to this, are just natural born cooks or just know how to do it. but. But I'm guessing not. I mean, I think most of us, if we're going to do something, have to practice it over and over. This was the fourth time I tried it, and I think finally it worked, you know, acceptably. Um, the, the goal is, you know, it's it's just a recipe with the usual suspects in it, as they would say. You know, flour, sugar, eggs, so forth. So, I mean, that's the stuff that all sorts of cookies are made out of. Uh, but the, the devil's in the details is, is, is you got to put it on there, wafer thin, and you do about four of them at a time on a cookie sheet, so it, it's a very tedious, time-consuming process. By hand, you have to draw circles of these. I mean, you got to make a perfect circle on uh, the baking sheet, and you put them in, you bake them, pull them out, and then you have to work very quickly and... <laughs> It was annoying because you burn the stuffing out of your fingers trying to get the job done. You have to take this little slip of paper with your fortune on it. You fold it, fold these circles in half. And then you take the half circle and you bend it lengthwise over the uh, rim of a cup or something like that. And that kind of completes the, the shape of the cookie. Then you slam it into a, a tin... Um, uh, for muffins, if you will, that kind of helps it hold its shape while it sits there and, and dries out and cools off. Well, I mean, you put it in the oven at 375 Fahrenheit degrees. It is blistering hot, you know, when you pull it out. But yet you have to do all this by hand. And I'm not aware of any gloves that I can get Ed, where you would have manual dexterity with your fingers, but, pre you know, preserve them from being burned. At least I'm not aware of anything, so there was a lot of nip and tuck in there just trying to get these done a few at a time. And so, 
it's kind of a labor of love to do that. Um, and they didn't, of course, they don't come out exactly the same as the one in the store but, uh, or, or, or with the restaurants. But I know my kids liked them at least. And that was just one of many items. You know, we had uh, pot stickers. I think we did the ad tonight before. Um, just mixing all these ingredients up. And wife and kids were helping with all this in there. Getting dishes ready. Just cleaning things up. Continual cleaning. Trying to make the place presentable. And getting ready for the following day. And following day I think about noon we started in on it at home just getting a lot more prep done and you know the guests came at we were gonna come at six and so we had basically six hours to do it and I tell you what you know doing this kind of thing for other people and trying to get it to come together uh, you know it's one thing as a family if you got plenty of time and you're just sitting there whistling Dixie don't have any else going on you know maybe isn't that big of a deal but when you have guests coming and you're trying to get all your ducks aligned in a row and get it out there to them in a timely way, um, <laughs> it's no small feat to try to make all that come together. And, you know, six hours sounds like a crazy amount of time for prep, but there still was ton to, tons to do. You know, we, uh, well, let me see here. I got the menu, I think, somewhere right over here. I've already mentioned a couple of things. Let me get my glasses on here. Yeah, so we actually created a small little tag with a menu on it, if you will, that we put on each plate. And so we had appetizers, we had some fried shrimp, um, kind of not breaded, put in bread crumbs. We had made some homemade cocktail sauce, sweet and sour sauce. They could put it in. We had the pork ginger pot stickers uh, that we did. So those are kind of the appetizers. We uh, made them soup. You know, traditionally you go into a, a Chinese food restaurant. A lot of times, you don't even ask for soup. They just ask you what kind of soup they want you want to have. You know, whether it's hot and sour or well, there's my other guy. Hot and sour or egg flour. I've never been able to get the egg flour recipe to work, so they had to be happy with hot and sour. So we served the ad to them, and then we had our main courses. Here, let me see if they can break. That. Unable to. Okay. All right. Let me go back here. I'll just try to take this guy off. Oops. There we go. We broke this up. Swarm mains. We had six of them here. Uh, well, with one of them, I guess, being white rice. I guess that really isn't a main. It's kind of a filler. You know, a lot of times people want to put, uh, pair the white rice with other dishes. So the five uh, dishes that we chose to put in there uh, with it were um, sesame chicken, sweet and sour pork. Both of these dishes, uh, two different meats, but they're kind of sweet. And just turn that off. And then we uh, gave them uh, Kung Pao spaghetti. The Kung Pao means kind of hot, so that also had chicken in it. We had one called Mugu Gai Pan. It's kind of a funny name, uh, but it's mainly vegetables. It does have a little chicken in it. It's kind of more soy and salt based. It had snow peas, water chestnuts, and uh, bamboo shoots, some of those kinds of things. You kind of got to have a taste for it. Not everybody likes that one. Um, my taste buds enjoy it fine and then we had this thing and I still don't know that I'm pronouncing it right Uyghur spicy beef skewers I think the Uyghur as I understand it was a, a certain ethnicity I think it's central China maybe um, and this was one of the air dishes and 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 along with white rice and those were our mains you know something? Maybe what I need to do is bring my fuel tank home, which is right over here. I think I'm going to do that right now while I'm thinking of it. And just get it home so we can get ready for the upcoming harvest, which I think is going to come after we get through this day. And along with the dinner, we also we gave them a Chinese food dinner roll. <laughs> I don't know if it's Americanized or not. They said it was a Chinese thing. It's called a pineapple bun. And 
my wife and I were were well into the recipe before we realized it didn't even have an ounce of pineapple in it. So I'm no, we're not sure why it's called that, but it's basically a type of sweet roll. So we gave them that, and then for dessert we had the uh, fortune cookies, like I mentioned previously, and then also oh yeah, this is something else we prepared the night before. A uh, the dessert dish. It's a tapioca based. Uh, dish called mango sago and it has some uh, coconut milk in it uh, has uh, mangoes a lot of mangoes that are crushed and pureed in there some condensed milk and and so forth in there and it's topped with some uh, chopped up mango so you know I've never cut up a mango before in my life so learn something new with the ad seems like every time we we cook this stuff up we learn more uh, but it's, it's, it kind of felt like an exercise in hurry up and wait. You know, we were working hard, trying to get it all ready, and then uh, dish by dish, we served it out there to them. You know, my wife insisted that we have all of it cooked before, uh, before the guests sat down, or basically as they sat down. So we had a lot of this ready. You know, we've been working hard to get it all ready. And then once it was done, we kind of sat there on our hands, and it's like, oh, we got to get this out, get this out. And it's like, no, we need to slow down and let them kind of enjoy the meal as it happens and not, not put them in a rush. So it's just so easy to be just hurry up and wait because we were hurry up, hurry up, bam, 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 just, you know, getting through things. And then all of a sudden ran out of stuff to do, if you will, and... Oh, it was just a good time all around. Lots of mistakes made and lots of uh, fun had at the same time. And you know what? I don't know that there is anything. Let me check my map in here. We're going to see kind of where... All right. Every field is grown. Oh, even these ones up here. Yeah, here's, here's the shape way up on the hill that we bailed up by the antenna that we just drove home from. Way over here, of course, is the hay field that we climbed up to here that we, we did a couple episodes ago. So I think I mentioned I'm just going to leave the bales up there. Uh, unlike in real life, these bales aren't going to rot. At some point, I'll, I'll rent a trailer as we harvest all of our grain and bring that in and then bale up fields. I'll, be, I'll rent a trailer. And while I do that, I'll go pick up the bales in these lo locations. I may need to even pull the trailer up there and get the, those in advance. It is so blooming steep. You know, as we were seeing, we were having struggle with the, the baler just even climbing the hills. So, may need to go up light and come do, down uh, heavy to make it work. So, I am going to, if I recall correctly, oh, I wonder if I have the... I do. Let me maybe just set the timer on. I want to show something here. Oh, you can see the. It's been a long time since I've showed this. I I adapted the mod that I have for Sky Swap in Farm Sim 17. I brought it back to Farm Sim 15. I don't think it would work multiplayer, but I enjoy having it in here. And of course, one facet of it is to make the clouds or the sky move. And it's real simple. The what you're seeing up here is just a. There you can see kind of the the apex of it right there where it all turns off of um, it makes the skybox turn the skybox is nothing more than a big old box or dome yeah when it gets to uh, evening or the time when the sundown texture sh starts showing what direction am I looking I'm looking east I need to look west so if you look in the west it's gonna start coloring I think we can see that now and one texture will fade into another and so the clouds of the day will eventually disappear and it will change to whatever the night or the uh, uh, sunset textures are as, as the time moves forward. So you'll see one slowly disappear and the other appear. And you kind of see that happening on the screen. So anyway, maybe I can just hit fast forward here a time or two. It even lightened up a little bit. Then we're gonna fade to night. Yeah, when I did work on the Sky Swap mod, I also found more textures for the night. 
And I don't know about you, but I have never seen a nighttime sky that looks like this. I don't know what telescope it was taken from, but that is a pretty wild sky. So probably taken by a telescope sitting somewhere in outer space. We have far too much light pollution to ever be blessed, you know, with a view quite like this. Anyway, let me get to day. We'll just kind of pass over midnight. Oh, we got to watch for the fruit for growth. As soon as it does that, you know what? I'm gonna take it. Oops, not in here. Let's take a look in here. It's, well, it says it's still growing. You know, other times when I've done this, I am, I, I believe, I think we're still on, yep, we're fast growth. So maybe by the time we get to morning, we will have uh, fully grown fields and be able to start in on the harvest. We can tell it's kind of on the final growth cycle. So we just need to kind of get to morning. So I'll just try to do, I got a fast forward mod in here. I'll just kind of skip ahead. What does it put on 12,000 speed, three o'clock, four o'clock, starting to get light. All right, let me check again. <laughs> well, that was perfect timing. Check again and there goes the bell. So I don't know that we're going to quite get ready for harvest, although it may be in the process of getting ready for it as we speak. You know, we did do a bunch of planting yesterday, so it all has to do with the timing of when the growth states change. Let me just run down here while it's going. Maybe once I get to 5.30, I'll slow down the time. Yeah, this is still green. So, we're not going to be quite ready to harvest. Uh, I'll maybe off cam get us closer to harvest. And, uh, but this episode here, I think we've gone 30 minutes. So, I will let everybody go. And it looks like the sky texture is back to a traditional. Yeah, there you can see the fade. Here's a nighttime texture there with. Uh, uh, see at midnight everything changes so midnight our sky texture changed the moon came out We lost our glorious view of the stars and all that and so the moon came out and Yeah, everything changed, but that's okay Thank you for coming along this episode and spending a little time with me here We will continue on the next one on our little farm here in Kelvin Valley Have a wonderful day wherever you're at and I will see you on the next one. Goodbye for now